Plainfield, Wisconsin, a series of chilling events would unfold, leading to the discovery of one of America's most notorious criminals. Edward Theodore Gein, also known as the Plainfield Ghoul, was an American murderer and body snatcher whose heinous acts would inspire some of Hollywood's most iconic horror characters. He had an obsession with making keepsakes out of body parts from corpses and necrophilia. His life story inspired the creation of fictional serial killers like Norman Bates from Psycho, Leatherface from The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs. Born on August 27, 1906, in La Crosse County, Wisconsin, Ed Gein's life was dominated by the influence of his mother, Augusta. The Gein family, consisting of Ed, his brother Henry, and their parents, lived on a secluded farm in Plainfield. Augusta, a fervent Lutheran, preached about the immorality of the world and the evils of women, instilling in her sons a deep fear and mistrust of the outside world. Ed's mother was a miserable woman who loathed her husband, but stayed married only due to her religious beliefs. She reflected that disgust onto her two boys who were never good enough, and she sought to isolate them from the world. She would often abuse them both physically and emotionally. Ed's school days were marked by off-putting mannerisms and random laughter, making him a target for bullies. Despite his challenges, he excelled in reading. His mother's influence was so profound that Ed and his brother Henry remained detached, relying only on each other for company. They were the weird kids in school who had no friends. In 1940, after the death of their father, the Gein brothers took on odd jobs to support themselves. While both were seen as reliable by the community, Ed had a particular affinity for babysitting, finding it easier to connect with children than adults. Even though their mother seemed to hate them, Ed loved his mother and was attached to her. However, Henry opposed his mother's beliefs and would outwardly speak ill about their mother. Augusta's strict views on every woman excluding herself being a nasty prostitute sexually confused Ed. He hadn't had any interactions with the opposite sex other than what his mother had told him. A pivotal moment in Ed's life occurred in 1944. A brush fire erupted near the Gein farm. The brothers set out to extinguish it, but got separated. When the fire was put out, Ed reported his brother missing. However, he soon led a search party directly to Henry's lifeless body. The circumstances of Henry's death raised suspicions, but no charges were ever filed against Ed. To see one of the well-known people in Plainfield, well-liked person in Plainfield, hanging there, upside down and uh, dressed out like a deer. Uh... Even though there were bruises on Henry's head, and the ground beneath him was not burnt. Most would speculate that Henry, Ed's own brother, was his first victim. After the death of his mother in 1945, Ed was left utterly alone. He began to board up rooms in their home that his mother used, leaving them untouched. He confined himself to a small room next to the kitchen. Being alone, he had all the time in the world to read. He would often read about anatomy books, wartime chronicles, cannibals, and cult-like stories. Ed's curiosity won, and the moral boundaries that a normal person had began to be non-existent. It was during this time that Ed would make nightly visits to the graveyard. His favorite section in the newspaper was the obituaries, and that is how he would choose which graves to dig up. He became obsessed with creating keepsakes and trophies out of the remains of women, However, the true extent of Gein's crimes came to light in 1957. Bernice Warden had disappeared from her hardware store. The last receipt she had written was for antifreeze for Ed. Her son knew this, and authorities had to interview Ed as a possible lead to her disappearance. Officers paid a visit to Ed's home and were struck by the house of horrors they stumbled into. Indeed, they had found the missing Bernice Warden. Her headless corpse was strung up like a deer carcass in Ed's shed. She had been shot with a rifle, her body mutilated, and her head was in a bag somewhere in the house. The body parts of Mary Hogan, who had gone missing years prior, was also found in several different places. The atrocities found at the home are something out of a walking nightmare. A belt made from female nipples, female heads with the top of the skulls sawed off, a suit sewn together out of human skin, skulls made to look like bowls, female reproductive parts in shoeboxes, nine masks made out of human faces, 
shrunken female heads, skin stretched over furniture chairs, and so many more evil trophies. Following his mother's passing, Gein expressed a desire for a sex change and started crafting a woman's suit from tanned female skins. He refuted claims of having intimate relations with the exhumed bodies due to their foul odor. This went on for years with several disappearances in the community popping up that went unsolved. Georgia Weckler, eight years old, disappeared on her way home from school, and 15-year-old Evelyn Hartley was abducted while babysitting. Two hunters, Victor Travis and Ray Burgess, also went missing in 1952. However, the remains found in Gein's home were all from adult females. At the Plainfield Cemetery, police found eight women's graves desecrated with body parts missing. The butchered remains of a woman named Bernice Warden were just the beginning. Deputies now journeyed into the private lair of Ed Gein. Gein confessed that with an accomplice named Gus, he would raid graves shortly after funerals, guided by obituaries. Gein's criminal activities escalated when Gus was institutionalized. He confessed to wearing human skin and using female body parts in disturbing ways. Despite his obsessions, Gein was likely a virgin and was diagnosed as clinically insane, with his troubled childhood being a significant factor. After being arrested, he confessed to authorities for shooting and murdering Mary Hogan. In the 1950s, Eddie Gein's disturbing actions drew global attention, making him a notorious figure in psychology for his mix of necrophilia, transvestism, and fetishism. Children even made light of his deeds through songs and jokes, termed Geiners, to cope with the horror. Plainfield, his hometown, was swarmed by media, turning it into the infamous locale of Eddie Gein. Most locals remembered Eddie as an odd yet harmless man, shocked by the revelation of his heinous crimes. On March 20, 1958, a fire, suspected to be arson, destroyed Gein's house. Eddie's reaction was indifferent, saying, just as well. Some of his possessions were salvaged and auctioned, including his 1949 Ford sedan, known for transporting corpses. It was bought and displayed at a fair, drawing many curious visitors. The public's intrigue with Eddie seemed unending to the Plainfield community. A mental evaluation deemed him incompetent for a first-degree murder trial. However, in 1968, he was tried for the murder of Bernice Warden and sentenced to life imprisonment in a mental hospital. This decision angered many in Plainfield, especially when his farm and belongings were auctioned, attracting hordes of onlookers. The town's residents were further upset when a company planned to charge for viewing Eddie's items, seeing it as a morbid attraction. Eddie Gein spent his remaining years contentedly in a mental institution, described by doctors as an exemplary patient. He integrated well with others, though he mostly kept to himself. His health improved, and he engaged in activities like reading, chatting with psychologists, and various handicrafts, even taking an interest in ham radios. Despite occasional unsettling stares at female staff, he was largely unproblematic and didn't need tranquilizers. The institution's superintendent Schubert regarded him as a model patient. On July 26, 1984, Gein passed away from cancer and was laid to rest in Plainfield Cemetery close to the graves he once desecrated. Though Gein's crimes were limited in number, their macabre nature left a lasting impact. His life story inspired the creation of fictional serial killers like Norman Bates from Psycho, Leatherface from The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Buffalo Bill from The Silence of the Lambs. Ed Gein's life serves as a chilling reminder of the depths of human depravity and the dark secrets that can lurk in the most unexpected places. Perhaps, if he had a different upbringing and mother, his life would have turned out differently. What are your thoughts on Eddie Gein's strange and heinous murders? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.